Hello! Welcome to a, another YouTube video of me playing Kerbal Space Program. In today's episode, I am flying a new component for my Yoda Space Station. <laughs> Yoda Station orbits planet Minmus, and this is an unmanned rocket delivering a habitat module, a basically like a living room for the space station and you can see the, the actual part that is going to be delivered to the station the actual payload is fairly small but uh, you at the very tippy toppy of the rocket and tippy toppy is a very technical term that's what they use at NASA to describe the highest point of the rocket when it is standing vertical on the launch pad. The tippy-toppy portion of this rocket is actually a little tugboat and the bottom part is just rockets to fly there. So that middle part there where you see that window inside of that module, that is the actual payload of this mission. That and a very long scaffolding arm that is connected to another docking port. So when we finally add this to the station, we're going to strip away the rockets and the tugboat on either side of this rocket, what you're looking at now. And we're just going to have that house for the astronauts to live in, and a long arm to another docking port for future spaceships to dock at the station. And, and I just wanted that arm to put the docking port out far enough away that if I get a little frisky when I try to dock a spaceship here <laughs> and uh, accidentally hit something, hit the wrong button, I'm going to hit the uh, docking arm and not the station proper. Now one of the interesting things about this vehicle is that the tugboat is using a nuclear power plant vis-a-vis uh, -vis the interstellar mod. I don't know if vis-a-vis -vis is the right word to say right there but whatever anyway in the interstellar mod you get a whole bunch of things including the ability to put nuclear reactors on your spaceships and that's what the tugboat has here i made an early attempt to deliver this payload to the yoda station and i ran out of electricity because i had forgot to deploy my extendable solar panels and by the time we reached minmus my batteries were dry so I was going to slap on some solar panels that do not need to be deployed, that don't start retracted, and I figured that'll provide me some emergency power, even if I'm a dumb butt and forget to extend the panels. And then I thought, well, you know what would be even cooler than solar panels? A nuclear reactor. So now basically, the tugboat has been completely over-engineered. I have a nuclear reactor, I have another component, that takes that nuclear energy, that nuclear heat, and turns it into electricity. And then I have another component that is the radiators so that the nuclear reactor doesn't overheat and explode or whatever. I guess it would just shut down. Anyway, it's an awful lot of work. <laughs> it's an awful lot of technology, nuclear power, for a little tugboat that I'm going to use once and then crash it into the Minmus' surface once I'm done using it because I won't need it anymore. So here we are, obviously... We've made it to Minmus, and we're closing in on Yoda Station. I've said before, and I will say it again, that docking maneuvers are the hardest thing for me to do in Kerbal Space Program. And this is a fine example. I'm just trying to get close enough to the dang space station to even start the docking procedure. And it's flying It's flying right by me. I've, I've burned my engines too hard to reach it. And now I've, I'm going past it. I'm overshooting. So now I'm, I'm turning around, pulling a UE, and trying to catch up to it. Because now it's getting away from me again. The whole process of me trying to dock to objects in space begins with me running straight at something. And then going past it and running straight at it again and going past it. And just hoping that every time I go past it, I go past it a little bit less. Now here you can see I'm getting really close. In fact, I'm getting very close very fast. In fact, this is super scary because I'm getting too close too quickly. There's the space station and I am going to oh, almost crash into it. <laughs> so there you can see the station, except that it's whizzing by at a, at a very high velocity 
it certainly got close enough that you can get a very good look at that Yoda space station, which we're trying to uh, we're trying to dock with and not run into like a missile and explode it. So it's a very delicate, very high precision maneuver, and I I I just get I don't know I just. I burn the engines too long. I go too fast. I burn too. I burn too hard and too fast, and that's dangerous in a delicate maneuver like docking. So here, I've decided that I'm finally close enough that I don't need the the engines anymore, and so I decouple the engines. And from this point forward, we will be using the uh, and and first, I'm just trying to slow the engines down or slow the yeah the engine component down a little bit. And now I'm using the tugboat. Which is entirely RCS, and I've, uh, the tugboat is actually very well balanced. The RCS thrusters are right at the center of gravity and everything, so that they can uh, make the ship go up and down and left and right, sliding up and down, left and right, without uh, tilting, without rotating. The, the tugboat and this part of the ship have been pretty well designed to perform this delicate maneuver. The engines that we just let go of were more brute force. They were just to get us here, just to get us close, and I don't need them anymore. Uh, so now, now the tugboat is this uh, piece of cargo's sole mode of locomotion. And that's actually, that's for the good. You can see there's the radiators to vent the heat from the nuclear reactor. The nuclear reactor itself is that little green dealy at the very tippy top. <laughs> And it's actually quite small, but it produces a lot of waste heat. And uh, even with those radiators, it was still going to eventually overheat. But it, the radiators kept it cold enough to last long enough to complete its mission. So here we are just using the maneuvering, uh, the RCS, the maneuvering jets, to try to get in closer to the station very slowly. It's good for me to go on only RCS power for these maneuvers because I have a tendency to burn as hard as I possibly can so restricting myself to a very small engine <laughs> so that even if I because you know RCS doesn't even have you know RCS is binary the RCS is either on or off it's not like the engines where I can go full throttle and get into trouble here's a fun fun thing you see that object drifting closer to the station those are the engines that I let go of brilliantly decided to get myself on a course really to, to be aimed at the station and then let go of the engines. Apparently, I'm an idiot. <laughs> I didn't realize that meant that the engines were going to continue going at the station. And so I end up with another very scary moment here where I'm thinking, oh, I may have to quick load from a previous save. But luckily, my aim wasn't so good in the engines. <laughs> Or maybe my aim was great. Uh, the engines did miss the station. Just uh, barely. Just just barely. But, I mean, those engines were big. They weren't going terribly fast. But if they had hit the station, they would have destroyed the solar panels for, for certain. There's a little spaceship docked with the station. There's at least one other component that's only holding on by a medium-sized docking port because I haven't invented, going through the science tree in career mode, I haven't invented the big docking ports yet. I, I really prefer using the, the large docking ports for space stations. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so there's a lot of ways that an impact with the space station could destroy it. And that would be a disaster of monumental proportions. But the way I figure it, if you're playing Kerbal Space Program, and you're not occasionally having a disaster or at least coming close to a disaster, if you're not having potential disasters once in a while, then you're probably doing it wrong. I mean, part there's two things that make Kerbal Space Program exciting. Success and catastrophic failure. Most of the game, 98% of the game, is somewhere in between, where you're just waiting to reach your next you know, course correction, or you're waiting as your ship descends gently with its parachutes, or you're waiting for, you know, you to reach Duna or whatever. But it's those those few moments of, of uh, jubilation over your success, 
or terror over impending crisis and disaster that really makes the game exciting and interesting. These are some really nice shots of the station. As I'm setting myself up, I'm finding my docking port that I want to actually uh, connect to. And so you can see it consists mainly of a cupola for, you know, kind of the command center. It's kind of the bridge. There, this is a great view. There's the cupola right there. That's the command center. And then there is a science station. I've been trying, this space station really exists to try to use the science station to good effect. Because I'm still at a point where it's like, okay, the science station lets you transmit your science for greater scientific value. And it lets you reset your scientific equipment so you can go and gather more scientific data. But especially for things as close as Minmus, it's still better to just fly the science equipment back to Kerbin and land. And so ultimately, I'm experimenting with this station here, thinking that, you know, if I wanted to explore and do science in the Jewel system, maybe I should use the science lab there. And then I could transmit science without having to fly all the way to Jewel and back again. Because Jewel has like four planets or moons, I guess, orbiting it. Maybe five? And anyway, there's a lot of science to do there. And it's, it's kind of hard to fly all the way out there and back again. So if I could use the science station to, or the science lab to make that more efficient, then that would be useful. So I just, I'm just doing this to experiment. The idea is the other little tiny spaceship that's docked to Yoda Station can fly down to Minmus and do some science, gather some rocks, whatever, fly up here, put it in the science lab, transmit it, and then the little spaceship can refuel and then fly back down to Minmus to do it again. I'm just trying to decide if that's really going to be effective or not. But, you know, that whole thing, try, I'm trying to maximize my science or whatever, is really secondary to the fact that I just like building space stations. Like, I was playing Kerbal Space Program before they had science, and I would build space stations that served no purpose other than to look cool. And that's, yeah, on some level, that's still what I'm doing. It's like, oh, we'll have a science lab, and I'll, it'll have some sort of purpose, but really, there's easier ways to do this. I don't need to build a space station to experiment with the science lab. I just like building space stations. I think they look neat. So we've got the, the on the main um, column, the main line of the station is the science lab and the cupola. And you can see several docking ports. And so what I'm adding to it is going to be in that main line. And it is the living quarters. Because right now, uh, Kerbal Knots are inside the science lab working, doing science. See, that's such a cool looking facility, I think. And there's a Kerbal in the cupola who is presumably making sure that nothing runs into the space station. <laughs> you know, but he's in the command seat, whatever. He's making sure that the station is functioning and all that jazz. But they don't have a, just a living quarters right now. They don't have a place to have a bunk bed, to have an exercise machine, a treadmill, to have a toilet. <laughs> Presumably they must have some sort of facilities in the cupola and the um, science lab, but... You know, that's what this component I'm adding is. This is a four, this has room for four Kerbal Knots. And when you go inside, you can see they've got a bunch of drawers and stuff for snacks and things. So I figure this component here is where the occupants of the space station can live. The cupola and the science lab are for working. This is for just living when you're off duty. And there we go. There we go. It is now connected. We they now have a place where they can go and take a load off and have some rec time and um, you stretch their legs and, and live. So you can see the one arm of the station there is all solar panels and also uh, fuel and battery power. So the arm with the uh, solar panels connected to it, that arm is really very utilitarian. It's got some fuel. It's got a lot of the batteries for electricity and obviously the batter uh, the electricity collecting solar panels although there are some batteries and solar panels on other parts of the station that were used to keep it live before the uh, solar panel arm was added and also are just there as a backup in case we ever um, you know have some sort of emergency some sort of disaster and can provide emergency power so now the tugboat is being disconnected 
and I am going to send the tugboat. I don't need this anymore, and I don't want it floating around, although I maybe should make a, launch a mission to grab the, uh, um, the engines and fuel tanks that are now in some sort of crazy orbit around Minimus. I think they're going to crash as well. I don't think they were in stable orbit, but this guy anyway. I don't want him just floating around Minimus and potentially crashing into the space station. Even though that's unlikely, the tugboat is now garbage. It is space debris, and so I'm going to crash it into Minimus, 